okay. Uh, Debbie Horvitz is an American artist based in the Los Angeles. As a medium uh, of his work, Horvitz used art book, uh, photograph, performance art, watercolor, and male art. Uh, in the last two years, in uh, 2020, during the COVID pandemic, he realized an exhibition. The name of the exhibition is Lesson at Kusverein in this pattern. And we invited the, the artist to talk about uh, this project with uh, Elisabetta Monera, the curator of the museum. And thank you, Elisabetta, and thank you, David. Elisabetta, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, David. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. It's morning for you, eight o'clock in Los yeah. Angeles. So thank you for <laughs> to come to this hour, I mean. Uh, so, um, thank you for your participation. I would like to, to start our conversation from the title of uh, our conversation that is Lessons. And so I know that it's related to um, a particular occasion, an exhibition in uh, Wiesbaden that changed completely from the first idea to what you actually realize because you couldn't uh, um, go to the Germany because of the travel restrictions of uh, the COVID pandemic and you change your mind and your project. So uh, I'd like to start from uh, uh, this particular case of, uh, I mean, not the unrealized project, but a different plan, so a sort of plan B project. Yeah. yeah. Um, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it was. I mean, well, well the one thing to correct you, there, there was no, it, there was no original idea yet for the exhibition. <laughs> so in a sense, I like, I had responded to the pandemic and came up with that, and that became the idea. But basically. Um, to describe what happened, I was nominated for this award in Wiesbaden, um, which is this town in uh, Germany, um, which is relevant to the history of Fluxus. And it was this kind of like Fluxus award. Um, and it was a residency and an exhibition and I was to come there. And then the pandemic hit. And I was like, okay, I don't know what, what to do for this residency now that I can't come here. But also simultaneously, my daughter is no longer in school and I'm now at home and I'm with her. And then I have this residency coming up. And so I thought to kind of respond to the situation also in the spirit of Fluxus to just create a kind of residency at a distance in which I would just be in residence in Wiesbaden in Los Angeles. And then now also with my daughter at home, I just roped her into the project it was like, well, if I'm hanging out with my daughter all day, then I guess she's part of the exhibition and part of the residency. And so the idea of the, the title lessons was literally, she's no longer in school. And so we, I, I was coming up with, and we were coming up with together. Maybe my wife was helping this, these kind of like less, these, these lesson plans, but they were more like along the lines of, Kind of like conceptual art fluxes these kind of playful games where we would just go and say okay well we don't have anything to do today and then we would just go out and kind of do something make something and then what developed for we spot in was okay i'm doing i mean this is like the problem with some of my projects there's so many layers and it gets so complicated and then like i try to explain it and i'm like oh my god what there was, I can't remember everything, but so then there was another element, which was the male project, also in the spirit of Fluxus, in which I would write these lessons down and then mail them the Wiesbaden to be put into the exhibition with the idea that someone could also participate in them. But also I would make, I made a hundred copies of the lessons and mailed them to a hundred other people and who were also invited if they wanted to, to send literally what I'm doing in Los Angeles with my daughter 
and then there's like the actual exhibition happening in Wiesbaden. There's like this notion of some kind of residency happening somewhere. It's like, it's wherever I'm residing. And then there's these letters that end up other places. Actually, now that I'm, I, we just started, I just started taping them to the window. And so then, then there's like, oh, I mean, I never thought about this, but there's the element of like, is the exhibition in Los Angeles, and then the neighbors who walk by and see them and think we're crazy are maybe they do them, but also this like these like little nodes of everywhere I send them like something happens there, and they end up in a in a kind of residence and you might do them you might not do them, who knows? So there's all, I mean there's all these like kind of different elements at play of like place and distance and like. There is this centralized place of Wiesbaden where you could, if you were to, to like exchange a breath with a plant and photograph it or, or some kind of, make some kind of documentation, you could send it there or not. You could just do it in your house. So there's like, this elements of like, it could be anywhere, it could be there, but it doesn't have to be like centralized in Germany. It kind of like with the mail project, it's just kind of decentralized into to anywhere. Yes, then actually it was not the, the, your first work kind, uh, kind of work like that. I mean, you work on uh, distance uh, and relation and uh, many, many artworks you realize are sort of interactive uh, process uh, uh, inside them. But in this case, uh, something is lost in relation with people or not. What do you think? Um, like like for, well, I mean, it's complicated. It's like, I have like difficulty um, thinking about this idea of this failed project because I'm constantly responding to situations and like molding my project. And I don't even know if there was an ideal situation in the beginning. So it's kind of taking shape however it can manifest itself. Um, and so maybe something is lost in the sense of what could have happened there but then something else is made instead. And in a sense, this could have been lost if that didn't happen, <laughs> if that made sense. Yes, yes, absolutely. Then I remember another project during the pandemic because I received a, a letter from you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was, I mean, a sort of love letter, but I was not the only one because <laughs> you sent this email to all the participants to another project that is that was uh, um, related to Mambo Museum uh, in Bologna. And in this case, it was sort of uh, sending uh, um, real letters uh, to the people and uh, you chose this sentence I'm reading in Italian, la distanza di tempo che questa ha percorso tra noi. So the distance uh, in time and place, in space. And uh, this, is a, this was, I mean, a project I, I loved a lot because uh, the main aim of the creator uh, was uh, Caterina Molteni, was to uh, put in a relation and keep in touch people with a concrete object, because even if you work on a digital forms, uh, I mean, since when, uh, since you uh, started your, to be an artist, I, I think, but there is something, mm, I mean, I think that during the pandemic, the digital was, grew up in a yeah. um, very strange way. And this project was linked to something concrete that mm -hmm. you you were receiving. Yeah, yeah, and it was also like thinking of everyone in isolation. Yeah. And thinking about where they are and where you are and where I am. And then kind of connecting, literally connecting this physical space. I mean, so there were two letters. I don't know how many you got. One was, and they were also in different languages. So it was completely, yeah. that one was the Italian love letter. For, um, they were also, I think they were anonymous, right? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you knew who it was because you know my work. Yes, you yes, know, yes. I anonymous. Know. There there was no uh, inside, but I recognized him. I mean. <laughs> so it was a, it was a secret um, anonymous yeah. lover. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, so it was like connecting these places and like, I mean, this literal distance um, of me here, you there, yes. Bologna, and then thinking like, not about digital space, but about like in your isolation and in my isolation and this kind of space between us. There was, I also did this other similar piece from um, those, so those were all mailed from Bologna, but I did this other mail work during the pandemic that was a reappropriation of an Andre Tote. Um, this, this text that said, I write to you because you are there and I am here. And I, and I had them rubber stamped on these giant pieces of cardboard that I had from boxes in my studio. And then I mailed those out to um, different in a, in a similar way to like different people in um, who were in isolation in various, like in Italy or in France. Um, well, one problem was they were like, they were really big and, and, and sent as giant postcards. And a lot of them I think didn't arrive because they, well, one, they, they were like kind of like these awkward shapes that easy, easy to get lost, but also mailing stuff at that moment the the like the post the, like the post office deliveries weren't really in full efficiency at the time and things would just disappear yes yeah, so um listening to your to you i'm wondering that it's i mean hard for you to find something that uh, actually you you didn't realize you did it completely realize at all I mean because you uh, interact with uh, your um, the conditions so I, I guess I can imagine that but uh, you um, gave us to more museum oh, yeah. and a realized project yeah <laughs> so I I look at the at this unrealized project because I um, I love the, very much this uh, this project and the creator of the, the project was Marco Scotti and the project was uh, uh, related to uh, the, a story, I mean, to memory of Los Angeles. Mm. And uh, you wrote him a, an email I'm reading and actually it is on the, the website of Moore. And you wrote uh, in this uh, uh, email, uh, Los Angeles is a car city, but it wasn't always this way. There used to be a trolley system here. Some of these trolleys were dumped into the ocean. I always saw that as a way of sending them into oblivion to forget the past of this city so that its present is not questioned. I once wanted to pull a trolley car or what is left of it, if anything, out of the ocean as if to bring it back into memory. I never did this. I may try. So did yeah. you try? Huh? Have I? I mean, I, I want to try it. But it, it was also, I mean, one of the pro one of the problems with like when I have these ideas is to like figure out how to actually do it, whether whether it's like in a literal sense, like to how to physically do that or in a more like artistic metaphorical sense. Um, and it's like, in the back of my head, like, oh, I, I, I yeah, I, I would still like to pull this trolley out of the ocean. Um, but it's also a trolley that most likely has um, kind of probably like disintegrated and or, or at least been um, consumed by the, the ocean environment, probably covered in various kelps or, or like starfish or bottom of the sea life. Um, and so, yeah, I still, I wouldn't call it a fail project, but it just uh, un, <laughs> unrealized or uh, not sure how to realize. <laughs> yes, yes, I was wondering the same because we were talking uh, some minutes ago with uh, Cesare Pietro Justi about failure and with Elisa Lefebvre about unfinished and failure. So I was, um, I'd like to ask you, uh, what about the unfinished? I mean, do you think it's your project that are uh, relational uh, based? Uh, uh, as unfinished work or or not? I mean, I feel that n n it can never really be finished. It's like, it's just always a process. I mean, but then I leave it so open-ended. I mean, there's a point when I can 
exhibit something in an exhibition and then and like that kind of defines it in this moment of time in a certain kind of material manifestation but it can always like these lessons can always keep going and they always and they can change um there was I, i'm going to talk about this project public access do you know this it's it's the photographs of me yeah. on the beaches in yeah in California <laughs> that were put onto Wikipedia. So for me, like I did this road trip and I made these photographs and I put them on Wikipedia and they were and kind you of were like, also banned from Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> but so I was playing with the idea of like physical public space and also digital public space. But then I was banned, and I was um, there were all these comments. Um, um, discussing the legitimacy of my project on Wikipedia, all of these things that were unexpected, which I were then I was then able to like kind of repackage into the work itself. And so there was this notion of when that project was finished, it actually wasn't finished because it was still growing. And then there and there became more substance to it that I would just keep. I basically would keep redefining the shape of the of what it was if that makes sense yes yes maybe also for other projects based on the internet uh, for example your uh, mood disorder project uh, mm -hmm. this or the meme the head in the freezer so oh, yeah i mean they are maybe still working so oh yeah totally yeah definitely i mean in, in a sense it's like maybe the, the point of it's not finished but it's like this um what would be called finish would be just this moment when I release it or like I put it, make it public, publicize yeah. it. And then it becomes, it, it becomes something else. Yeah. Then I know that Marco Scotti has a question for you. <laughs> yes. Hi <Hey>, David. <laughs> Hope you can uh, hear me. <laughs> yeah, no, there's like someone, it's the morning worker is blowing the, don't worry. <laughs> Blowing the leaves. It's part of the, <laughs> the audio. <laughs> Thank you so much, David, for being with us. I just uh, one question. As you, you were talking about many layers of your work, uh, which sometimes are really visible, like I, rec I remember your project in Venice when you stayed in the city and you occupied the city with your works and nearly uh, together with Silvia Guerra. And in works like that, uh, which are obviously also very um, influenced by Fluxus, which is a uh, obviously a model for you. When uh, uh, in your practice with similar kind of project can be defined and realized? When is the moment you say, okay, this is an unrealized project, I, I can donate it tomorrow, okay, for <laughs> me. What is the difference? I don't know. I mean, well, there's, I mean, the interest, so to, to talk about the Venice project, I think is interesting. Um, and it also, we have to talk about a relationship with like a curator and like how my mind works and so with Sylvia I was kind of like sending her so many ideas and depending on how this curator minds work it's like someone will stop me and be like okay we do one that's good and I was like okay here's five can you help me pick one but then sometimes they're like oh just keep coming and then all of a sudden there's a hundred ideas and we are attempting to do them all. And then at one point we realize which ones are we going to do? And then we realize it doesn't matter. We just do as many as we can. And there's the ones that we, that are on our list that we never did, but they were like, that we, that we said we would do are the ones that like, it, it's kind of like a chaos. It's almost like a kind of chaos. Um, and then in the end, there's like, oh, here's what happened. And then there are some things that actually didn't happen, but it was more, it, they were unrealized in the sense that in this kind of like, in this like moment of just overwhelm, overwhelmingness and chaos of just like my like ADD, like, ah, let's do this. And then we're walking, I mean, like we walked down the street and like, oh, how about we just put postcards in the postcard rack? So we started talking to the, the postcard sellers and then that becomes like another thing and then we have this other idea and then maybe we forget it so that's another notion of like the unrealized idea is is the the work that you forgot to do and then we're, we're both leaving venice on the boat and we're like oh my god we forgot to do that thing where we were going to do the ocean sounds 
at the canal and we told someone we were going to be there but we forgot to show up <laughs> that's very interesting because it's a process that also involves a lot of uh, other people like uh, people who live in venezia for example or makers or things uh, something very fluid you could say and uh, that's very interesting because it's quite a, it's difficult to say what's unrealized or what's realized in this kind of process and that's i think that's what's very interesting about it yeah and, may, and also maybe like it's already in the conceptual art it's already realized once you like you had the idea of it so maybe the unrealized project is the one that you haven't con conceived yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not so easy as uh, even where the artist is dead, you can still realize it sometimes. Yeah. So as we were talking about Robert Smithson with Lisa, it's uh, it's not something that's ever finished, but yeah. not completely. There are various shades. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's, it's also, Marco, I was wondering, it is also difficult to understand how to document, uh, to represent, I mean, an analyzer project, because, for example, David just sent us an email. So in our archive, your project is linked just an idea, I mean, so it's a um, kind of problem uh, uh, to understand how to, 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 to tell, to... How to I mean, preserve the, ideas. Yeah. To preserve yeah. ideas, yes. Yeah. But also this idea that like what I sent you was just like, it's almost like a seed, a germ of like an idea. And what is the actual work? Because it's not realized yet. Yeah. It could be it could be a trolley in a gallery or it could end up being like like a sound piece yeah. or something or like a, some kind of video. And so sometimes my unrealized ideas are just these kind of like notions of something that doesn't yet exist and that once they start to do it something you know then it starts to take shape so there it's just like the very the pre 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 conception of something yeah yeah thank you so valentina i don't want don't know if there are any uh, other questions no, i don't know i see Lisa a comment Kurt. I see a comment from Lisa Lefro. Uh, Lefro uh, he wrote a wonderful problem. It's blurred the boundary between archive and artwork. So this is uh, we close with this uh, sentence yeah. by Lisa Lefro. So David, uh, and thank you very much. It was really very interesting. And now we have to. Uh, I have to interrupt you and go to the to the next uh, speech to the next conversation. Thank you, David. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you Bye. very much. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.